friends, welcome back to my channel. Sass here, I'm here for another Life After Lockup. None much happened last night, y'all. Nothing. But I am here to give you a recap, okay? We won't be here next week because next week is, of course, Christmas. So we'll be back in two weeks, but let's just get into it, all right? Let's start off with Andrea. And Lamar, as we know, Lamar um, is trying to have a relationship with his daughter, Shantae. Andrea is opposed of this idea, okay? She's jealous of Shantae, and she don't want Lamar to have a relationship with his daughter. Lamar took it upon himself to tell his eight-year-old daughter, Priscilla, the secret, okay? He told her, look, you're going to go meet your... Um, your sister, don't tell your mom. Okay? We gonna go to the beach to meet your sister. Don't tell your mom. Whatever you do, don't tell your mama. He put all that on the eight-year-old, knowing good and well an eight-year-old can't hold water. So, Priscilla, a couple of times she almost slipped up. Well, Andrea, Tennyson, Nile, and Priscilla are on their way to a house that, um, Andrea is selling because she's a real estate agent and she thought it was a good idea for them to go into this pool To a house that she's selling they all up in the pool got drinks. They probably don't went into the kitchen Child whatever she said look if they don't know it won't hurt them. so um, Andrea is talking to Tennyson and he says she says listen, I know you don't want to go on a missions trip because me and Lamar cut up. We argue, we yell, we fuss in front of Priscilla, and you don't like that. And yes, that is something that we shouldn't be doing, but hey, we do it. So I thought it would be a great idea for all of us to go on a missions trip. We can go as a family. And Tennyson, he was like, that's cool. Okay, now I like. Priscilla, of course Priscilla liked the child. She's going to go on a trip. And so, um, Andrea was like, yes, you know, she hasn't been to Africa since she was younger and she wants to go to Ghana. So, as a family, they are going to go on a missions trip to Ghana. And there, you know, Tennyson was like, you know what? That relieves some stress for me, okay? And, and this may work better. So, in the middle of this, Priscilla says, can Shantae go? Just in the middle of it. Okay, so, of course, Andrea, she was like, huh? Shantae, how you know that name? I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute now, I'm confused. How do you know about Shantae? So, of course, Priscilla, immediately, she's, you know, taken back and she's scared because her mom is cuckoo for Cocoa Puss and she fly out the handle. Just like that. And so, Andre said, you ain't in trouble. You are not in trouble. So, Priscilla says that, you know, her and her dad went to the beach and met Shantae. So, Andre's like, oh, really? Okay. So, she looked at Tennyson and I said, y'all know about this? Did y'all know about this? And Tennyson said, listen, okay, we found out. We found out. And so, she said, oh, so y'all can tell me about it. Y'all can tell me. So Nyla, being the beautiful, intelligent young lady she is, she says, it's not about you. Let me repeat that, friends. Nyla looked at her mama dead in her face and said, it's not about you. Priscilla came to us as her brother and sister and told us, you didn't need to know about it. It wasn't about you, mom. So, of course, Andrea, she just is running hot. How dare Lamar have their daughter lie to her? Which I agree with. Lamar should not have put that on her, on his eight-year-old daughter's back. Lamar need to grow some nuts. And he should have told Andrea himself. He should tell Andrea, I want a relationship with my daughter, period. You mad? Stay mad. Be mad. That's it. But he couldn't do that. He's sneaking and lying, putting all this pressure on his eight-year-old daughter. So Audrey said, listen, pack up all this crap, get an Uber, go home. I'm about to go 
to your Uncle Dulo's house and I'm about to shut it down. So Audra going down the road going, ain't he, honey, she mad. Honey, she mad, child. She is mad. So she gets there. There is Lamar and Uncle Dulo on the stoop, you know, smoking a little ganja, drinking, and child, honey, she goes up. Of course, she confronts him about, you know, Telling Priscilla, going to see Shantae, lying behind her back, having a dollar line. Honey, she's screaming, yelling. Honey, the dogs done got the bark and the neighbors is probably out the window. Child, it was just a mess. Lamar, he says, listen, you better calm down. You gonna show up at my people's place like this, carrying on, cutting up. We don't do that here. You don't do that, okay? Now, I'm not trying to go to prison for life. So the best thing for you to do is get your butt back in that car. Of course, Andrea doing all this, screaming, yelling, Dulo trying to get in the middle of it. Dulo said, both of y'all stop, okay? Both of you stop. So Andrea, she gets mad. She finally leaves. Lamar says, listen, I ain't trying to go back to prison, but she gonna push me there. Dulo said, if you don't go on no bad, sit down somewhere. So Dulo said, listen, I see both sides, okay? Audra is somewhat jealous of Shantae, and Lamar had no business lying to Audria. He should have told her, and he shouldn't have said that, gave that to Priscilla. So, Dulo said, listen, we're going to have to work this out. We are going to have to work this out because we're family, and that is what family does. Me, myself, I thought Andre was going to be a whole lot worse than what she was, child. All that screaming and yelling and hollering, honey. I thought she was going to take her shoe off and bust upside the ball's head. <laughs> so, we shall see about Andrea and, you know, Lamar. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about Puppy and Amber, child. Amber. She is getting ready. She is... You know, flat iron her hair. She put on a little bit of makeup. Why? Because it is time to pick up Puppy Child. Puppy is getting released from prison. Side note, Amber, she got a nice ride, child. That car cute. So anyway, she's on her way to prison. She just um, parked on the side of the road. And she waiting. She waiting. She waiting. She waiting. She says, listen, I hope when Puppy gets out of prison, she ain't about that lifestyle. I ain't trying to get into drugs. I ain't trying to do no scheming. I ain't trying to go back to prison. Okay, I'm already on probation for 20 years. I don't have time. But I do love Puppy. So she's waiting, and she's waiting, and she's waiting, and she get a phone call from some dude who didn't have time for her. Honey, that dude said, listen here, okay? You got to go to the courthouse to pick up Puppy. And so she was like, why do I have to do that? He said, click. He said, find your way to the courthouse. I don't have time to discuss this. So she goes to the courthouse, and who comes out? Oh, well, it's Puppy. Let me tell y'all something. Puppy and Amber make a cute couple. Okay, puppy came out with the wing eyeliner, honey. It was crisp. It was crisp, child. Got a little bit of makeup, honey. Amber and puppy make a cute couple. Now, puppy says, I want to see where this relationship is going. Okay, we were all cuddled up and booed up, you know, in prison. So, I'm outside now. I mean, I got 20 years over my head, but oh well. Okay, she on probation for 20 years, child. But she said, I want to see where this is going. Amber says, we'll take it day by day. One day at a time, one day at a time, one day at a time. <laughs> Honey, did y'all see Puppy's face? Puppy was like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, so, oh, all right. So you ain't trying to get it like that. You ain't tried to get it with me. It was all good in prison. But it ain't like that now. Okay. All right. So, they driving down the road. And then we find out that in order for you to get drunk in prison, you can drink hand sanitizer. Just mix it with a little bit of water and you'll be all right. I mean, it's not good for your level. But all the thing you need is just this much for you to get towed up from the floor up. Honey, when I tell you these prisons, They'll do anything to get high or drunk. Child drinking hand sanitizer. I do not think so. So they end up at a restaurant, child, a little mom and pop shop, okay? And so, 
puppy, she goes in there and gets cleaned up a little bit because she got that prison funk. We have Amber waiting for her. Here comes puppy. She's looking all right. She done cleaned up a little bit. And then she brings up Vincent. Y'all remember that whole scheme? Okay, I'll break it down for you. Vincent adopted Puppy so he could get an extra $500 a month. Well, when he gets that $500 a month, he will split that money between Amber and Puppy. A grown man adopting a grown woman to scheme, to scam and lie to the government. Yeah, that's going to work out all right. So, Amber said, listen, I don't want to have nothing to do with Vincent. Okay, I don't like Vincent. I don't want Vincent touching me. I don't want Vincent calling me. When he was here, he didn't touch me. It was gross when he kissed me. We didn't even sleep together. Okay, at say on the Vincent say no. So of course, puppy fresh out of prison, right? She gonna talk about well, listen. Um, so there's no scam and scheme and lie. Oh, okay. But listen, if he still want to adopt me, I want some of the cut. I want some of that money. He profiting off me. He gets $500. I'm out. I want some of that money. So, puppy said, let's call him. Amber said, look, for my phone, it's blocked. So, he ain't going to answer. She said, we'll block the number. So, she calls. And who answers? Vincent. She said, hey, daddy. Hey, daddy. How you doing, daddy? Hi, daddy. <laughs> so he was like, oh, hey, puppy. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of conversation is this? This conversation is ridiculous. So anyway, so she tells, she was like, oh, are you still scamming? Okay, you still want to adopt? See, I'm out now. Okay, you still want me as a dependent? He said, listen, I thought about that. And it was a terrible idea. And I'm not even doing it. And she was like, well, the papers was filed. I'm going to pull the cut. See, that was the scam. That was the lie. Me and Amber get part of the money. He was like, yes, I know. But I'm already in the process of getting rid of that. That was a terrible idea. I'm not doing it. Okay? So, um, Puppy and Vincent was going back and forth. And um, Vincent was like, listen, you're not going to tell me what I am and what I'm not going to do. Okay? So, anyway, he hangs up. And Amber and Puppy is sitting there, you know, eating their food. Child, Puppy is like Amber's mom. Honey, they still in it. They are still in for the scamming and the lying and the scheming. Amber, let it go, y'all. Leave them alone, Amber. Okay? Because, see, Amber is staying with Puppy's mom. And Puppy and Amber's like, what are we going to do about our living situation? Because we both can't stay there. So anyway, Amber, please move on. Move on. Because that's what I'm doing. All right, let's talk about Michael and Malcolm real quick. So it's time for Malcolm to take his butt home. Good. Malcolm, go home, stay home, don't come back. So he's saying his goodbyes, and Sarah says that she appreciate how Malcolm handled himself. You know, he met Michael for the first time. He met her family. He got along with the children. Everything was great, okay? It went well. Malcolm said that he had, you know, a nice time with um, Sarah, all right? And he says that when he came, he loved Sarah. Does he love her now? He don't know. See, Malcolm seen the shenanigans. Malcolm seen how they cut up. Malcolm seen how Sarah really feels about Michael. He seen it. If he didn't see it, somebody need to shake him. Okay? So anyway, they say their goodbyes. He leave. Who pulls up? Michael. So here comes Sarah. Oh, my God, Michael. Michael says, listen, I'm hip to Malcolm, okay? He's not jealous of Malcolm at all because, see, Sarah is dating Malcolm, okay? He ain't jealous because Sarah is his wife, okay? See, Malcolm is Sarah's boyfriend, but I'm her husband, child. Michael has had on the same jeans every time we see him. Y'all clock out. Michael has worn those jeans now for a year and a half. 
I tell you, his balls are just disgusting, y'all. It got lead on. So anyway, Michael goes inside and I guess he talks to Sarah. Child, let's move on. All right, let's talk about Quay and Chevelle, child. Quay, he in Houston. He working at the barber shop, child. He is working. He is cleaning up hair. I think he may be doing a little bit of cutting. I'm not sure. But, honey, he is there. He got him a job. Because, as we know, Chevelle kicked him out. Now, Chevelle. Chevelle says she done with Quay. She says she's tired of Quay. Quay got caught cheating. And she don't deserve it. So, she's on her bed, child. And one of her best friends that she's known for years never dated. But the guy liked her. But she really wasn't interested in him. His name is Jay. So, they're talking on the phone. And she says, listen... Quay, he done got caught cheating. What you doing? And so, Jay says, listen, I'm single, ready to mingle. And she says, oh, so you single? He said, yeah, I'm single. What's up? Um, you want to go to dinner? That's right. We are going to dinner tonight. And so, Chevelle said, oh, really? We're going to dinner? He said, we sure are. Okay, so, Chevelle, of course, she liked that because there's a guy who she knows. And, hey. You know, he's paying a bit of attention to her. You know, Quay, Quay, Quay out here doing his own thing. Quay in Houston. So, while Chevelle is getting all pretty up for her date, we got Quay talking to the homeboys at the barbershop. He said, listen, I did not cheat on Chevelle. Me and the girl from Chi-Town, we just talked. You know, she gave me some words of wisdom. She know what it's like. Okay? And we just talked about some things. I never met her. I didn't touch her. I just communicated with her through text. I didn't cheat. Okay? Of course, Chevelle, she blew this all out of proportion. <laughs> what kind of words of wisdom come with an eggplant emoji? Can y'all answer that for me? What kind of a, it was a huge eggplant emoji. Y'all remember? Oh yeah, words of wisdom, child. So the whole boys was like, listen, okay? We all know how women is. But since you here in Houston, you might as well break it down and let's have some good old time. You going to Chicago? Okay, well, before you go to Chicago to see what Chi-Town's all about, since you didn't cheat, and since you didn't touch her, you didn't mean nothing, okay? You still want to go to Chicago. Well, before you do that, let's break it off in Houston. We're going to take you to places where the big booties are, and we're about to have some guys. yadi 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 We're about to show you what Meg was talking about, honey. So he was like, listen, okay, I'm all for having a good time, but I am going to be loyal to Chevelle and, you know, the, the baby girl, okay? I still have love for them. I still love them. So Quay said that he got love for her. He ain't going nowhere. He said in that confessional that he messed up, and he would do everything he can to make it up to Chevelle. He seemed sad. He seemed like he really, really, you know, missed them. And so we shall see. Meanwhile, Chevelle after dinner with Jay. Jay walked in, child. I thought he was all of 12. Jay cute, though. I think he's cuter than um, Quay. He's little. He's a little old thing. But he's cute. And they seemed like they were having a good time. It was a little awkward when they started feeding each other. I was like, no, don't do that. I mean, everything's good. We don't need to see, you know, you two feeding each other. Stop it. Please stop. Ugh, stop it. But, you know, Jay, he seemed like that he liked Chevelle. And Chevelle, of course, seemed like that she liked him. But she don't know where it's going. We all know where it's going. Jay, you're a plant. You're a plant. Okay. We may or may not see Jay again. Honey, the producers probably gave him $500 and said, listen, can you do this for us? We need some filler time. <laughs> Jay was like, cool. <laughs> so anyway, I believe that Chevelle and Quay will get back together. Okay? Bottom line. 
Nothing else need to be said. But that was a cute little moment between Chevelle and Jay. Let's move on. Last and least, Dumpster Fire Destiny and Sean Child. Destiny, she's still at her sister's house. She is a miserable piece of garbage. I can't stand her, y'all. Sean, he's sitting at home still thinking about where she at. Not where the car at, where the credit card's at, where she at. So she's calling him. He answers, and honey, even the way she talks to him, she don't care nothing about him. Rude, disrespectful, got an attitude, rolling her eyes. Basically, she was saying, hey, how you doing? He was like, oh, are you okay? I'm fine. Listen, okay, I'm not going to tell you where I'm at. I don't need to tell you where I'm at. I'm poor. I'm broke. Yeah, I got your credit card. I've been running up. Yeah, I'm driving your car all around the place. But I need more money. The nerve. Sean, instead of saying, listen here, yo, beady, okay? If you don't bring my car back or you don't meet me somewhere, I will call the law and I will report it stolen. No, his stupid self. Didn't say that. He gonna talk about, I worried about you. You gonna go to court? I worried about you. You gonna go to court? I worried about you. You gonna go to court? Dumpster Fire Destiny said, Sean, 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 stop it. I'm not gonna tell you where I'm at. Point blank, period. Here comes Dumpster Fire Destiny. Now see, the reason why she left him and got all her stuff and all her things is because she don't trust Sean. She's upset because he lied to her about the relationship with the mother of his six children. She, she needs a reason. That's her reason. She needs some way to justify why she's acting like a biatch. And this is it. She keeps saying that she loves him, loves him. No, 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 sugar. She loves his money because his stupid self keeps giving it to her. Even after she sat there and said, I'm not going to tell you where I'm at. She says, I need money. And he was like, are you serious? You think that I'm going to give you money? You left in the dead of night? You took all your stuff? You're not telling me where you're at? You asked for money? She was like, yeah. What did stupid slow Sean do? We see him sending $100. I think that's cash app. Sean is a whole... He's slow, y'all. You got to be kidding me. After all this, you still got to send her a $100. So here's Destiny. Destiny is like, oh, well, yippee. Okay? She's talking to her sister, and then a friend come over. Some girl, honey, she look hard in the face as well. She got stories. Done known her for four, four years. Destiny said that she loves her. Bring up, you know, Sean. Even her friend is hip to it. The friend said, listen, as long as Sean keeps shelling out money, Destiny's going to string him along. The sister was like, listen, you got the credit card. He giving you money. Why go back? Here's Destiny. Well, I love him, but he lied to me about the relationship with the mother of his children, Kelly. Really? Girl, that's weak. We all know what it is. She don't love Sean. She is using Sean for money, and Sean keeps giving it to her. I have said this, whatever happens to Sean, he deserves, okay? So, Destiny, she's texting somebody, so the producers are nosy, and they was like, who's that? She says, I don't want to talk about it. The producer says, what? I don't want to talk about it. Obviously, she is testing another dude, or woman, I'm thinking a dude. Sean knows that she done got two profiles on Facebook. She's done been engaged and the idiot still gave her money. She still got the credit card. She ordered pizza and all this stuff. So he's at work and he was like, listen, I am upset by this. I can't tell. Because see, she has court in a couple of days and we all know that $50,000 is hanging over his head. So he calls 
of the pizza place because he got a little warning, a text from the bank saying, did you make this transaction? It seems fraudulent. So he calls the pizza place and the pizza place, you know, was like, we don't supposed to be giving out this information, but I am, child. So the pizza place gave the address as to where Destiny was because they delivered, you know, the pizza. So Sean said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down there and I'm going to confront her. So he jumps on a plane and he's going to go and um, confront Destiny. You mean to tell me you can just leave your job like that? Lickety split. It must have been the weekend. Was it the weekend? Oh, okay. That is Sean and Destiny. Y'all know what to do. Leave all your comments down below. And don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friend, in two weeks. Well, I see y'all for 90 Day Fiance. But anyway, until next time, bye.